So, another Agatha Christie book. Hello, fellow bookquesters. It is I, Aaron the Bookquester, and today I got this great Agatha Christie book, Catamount Pigeons by Agatha Christie, herself the Queen of Mystery, and well, let's get right on to it. So, to start, basically there was a revolution at Ramat, and jewels of the kit of the Prince Ali was hidden. Hidden within the rockwood of his nephew, of his nephew named Jennifer. And Jennifer goes to this private school called Meadowbank, and there she takes her racket. Then, her racket feels very unbalanced, because, you know, there's, you know, a million pounds worth of jewels in there, just, just say. And because of that, her racket feels pretty unbalanced. Due to this, she decides to switch with her friend, Julie Upjohn. And then afterwards, they start to realize something's up. Because one day, two mistresses check what's going on in the sports pavilion and finds that, well, the unpopular games mistress, the PE teacher basically, she's dead. Her name was Miss Springer, and she was dead, she was shot, it is undoubtedly murder. And well, who did it? And of course, if a murder if a murder occurs at the school, obviously the parents are freaking out. And meanwhile, Mr. Bulstrode, who is the headmistress of the school, goes into full calm mode, and she actually likes these kind of storms of her school. Because, you know, she gets to fight it out, and she's that kind of person. So she really likes change, she accepts it, and meanwhile, there's a murder. That's a problem. And basically, Inspector Kessley, he starts to investigate. And meanwhile, there is a spy within the school who actually, like, actually, um, say, looks after what's going on. Because, you see, the government, they basically just sent the spy guy, and he's just kind of spying, seeing, basically just seeing if the jewels can be found or what these people who murdered Miss Springer is after. And so, they tried to solve the case. However, one day, there is a murder, the second murder of the school within a span of the week. Mrs. Valentras or something among those lines? She was supposed to, supposedly, the successor of Miss Bulstrode. She was killed. Sent back in the bag. And she's dead. And now we got a second murder and we don't know what to do. And one of the one of the students, who is a princess and also happened to be the cousin of that Prince Ali himself, well, she got kidnapped. She she got into a chaffer, and the chaffer wasn't the chaffer that his her uncle sent for her. What is going on? And also, finally, there's a third murder at the sports pavilion, and this time. Not, uh, not at the sports pavilion this time, this is a different place, and it's the French teacher. And we're thinking that maybe the French teacher tried to blackmail the murderer or something. Well, yeah, and she's dead. Sandbag, sandbag in the back again. And now, who is the murderer? Who is the cat among the pigeons? The one that does not belong in the school. Well, we don't know. Meanwhile, Julia Upjohn, she thinks that her racket is important. Because she remembers that Jennifer, who she traded the racket with, this this woman had come, a foreigner, or an American by the looks of it, and her accent, she basically took Jennifer's old racket and gave her a new one. Why? Just to kind of, like Aladdin's lamp, you know, trading the old dusty lamp for a brand new one when the old dusty lamp is actually really, really valuable, although it doesn't look like it. Maybe it was that kind of deal. And after three, after two murders at the sports pavilion, and another person murdered, she thinks that something valuable must be in her racket, or is there some sort of secret? And after, and after a bit of fiddling, she finds out that in the handle of the racket is hollow, and within the racket, there are jewels worth millions of pounds. And so, she knows someone that she can consult. She leaves a note to say that she hadn't been kidnapped, and hurried, hurried, to meet our favorite detective, Hercule Poirot. And by the way, that is the first book where the main detective, 
does not appear until like the last quarter of the book. That is absolutely ridiculous. Why? Just why? The pain. I was like, I was actually like reading it and I was like, oh, Poirot is still not here. And I'm like, is this a Poirot book? But it is. It says it is. He didn't appear until the last quarter of the book. I feel scammed, Agatha Christie. I feel scammed. But anyway, Echo Poirot is on the scene and he looks around. He looks around. And he starts to see the truth, and he starts to piece it together like always. But, if you want to actually know the ending of the book, you better read it. I'm not going to spoil the entire mystery. So, comments. This book, in Agatha Christie terms, was a bit of a letdown. Due to the fact that, well, Agatha Christie books are usually just on another level with just normal mystery books. This just felt like a typical mystery book that I would read. That has like the typical twists and turns. I got the Christie's twists and turns are so unpredictable, but for this one, it was more or less predictable. And also, the murderer is just, it's just out of the blue, you know what I mean? Because usually in I got the Christie books, there's more like history, there's more background, and it like builds up from the start. But this has like this very useless build up of where the jewels are from. But there's really no build up about the actual murder itself. It's more like there's a really big backstory about the jewels and why the murders were committed, but there's no backstory about the murderess or why about the personal murderess and all that stuff. And that is why I feel like this murder, this book, didn't feel as good as the other Agatha Christie masterpieces that I have read through, such as the murder of Roger Ackroyd or or Dumb Witness, or even, you know, the old famous The Murder on Orient Express. And finally, the build-up, I have already mentioned this, the build-up was pretty useless. It did build up with the jewels, but I feel like she should have ended it in the first quarter of the book, not like, like, a, like half of the book. And the main detective appears way too late in my opinion. And, and it did build up, even like, even if like the build-up is really good, and then there was a really big reveal, then yes, if the build-up and the reveal is connected, it's good. It's a good book, and Agatha Christie tends to have a big build-up. However, for this book, I feel like the build-up and the actual murderer reveal wasn't that connected at all. Of course, there were small, tiny details that kind of hinted at the murderer at the start, but at the same time, we can't really connect the dots at all about that. And also, the build-up, as I said, was not so much related with the murder, it was more related with the jewels that was hidden and why the murderer, whoever the murderer is, or the murderess, is murdering. So, that is my review for Agatha Christie, Cat Among Pigeons, and like always, your book cluster, Aaron the book cluster. I would definitely encourage people to read this book because it is as good as the usual typical mystery novels that you would find at the store. However, if you want to really feel the magic of Agatha Christie, I would recommend Death on the Nile, The Murder of Roger Ackroyd, or the all-time classic that if you haven't read, you have been living under a rock, Murder on Orient Express. Have a great day!